Hi, I'm Lisa Allen with HGTV. And I'm George Lukacs. And we are here live at City Hall at Summit, New Jersey. And tonight is a really exciting night, George. They're going to re-elect their council president, and the council members are going to get assigned new um, committees. So, and um, tonight we're going to hear from the mayor. She's going to be giving her State of the City address. This is one of the great nights, I think, of Summit. It really binds Summit together. <laughs> and as you know, today they had the 116th uh, inauguration yes. of all the congressmen. Yeah. We mm -hmm. had 10 new senators and 101 new congressmen. Mm -hmm. So it's a great night. And tonight it's going to be our people. Yes. The summit. It's and wonderful. you know, it is 2019. And so 100 years ago, women got the right to vote. Right? Is that amazing? I know, I know. And we have... Should have been 200? Four women on the dais here. So yes. that's exciting for Summit. That's right. And the most Congress uh, people yeah. in Congress ever. Yeah. Women. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a wonderful event, yeah. yeah. So we have so a full great. slate tonight. We do. We have, uh, mm -hmm. you're going to be interviewing, uh, interviewing Rosemary Ligatiz. Yeah, the, uh, the city clerk. We're going to be hearing from Nora Radis. Yeah. And we're going to be interviewing all our councilmen. Yeah, so the great. incoming and outgoing. Yeah. But you know who we're going to start with tonight? Assemblyman Bramnick. Well, we're very uh, lucky oh, to have him tonight. Yes, and you know where he is? He's right over here. There he is. We're going to have him step over. Hi, Assemblyman. Thanks Good for having to me. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. Everybody. Thank Happy you. New Year. Happy New Year to you. It's wonderful. So you guys have been busy. You've been crossing the state of New Jersey. We have a lot of work ahead. What are you working on? Well, my main concern is I want to make sure that Summit controls its own schools. And you may be aware that there's a lawsuit pending. Mm -hmm. And there is a movement to have the county take over local schools. And I'm concerned about it. I want local parents to run local schools. That's a big concern for me. That's one. Two, I do not want the state of New Jersey telling municipalities where to put their housing. And three, the most important one is you got to make tax reform because people are leaving the state. There was just a survey out today about United Van Lines, and we got to keep our people here and we have to be competitive. Those are the three major issues in my book. Lisa and I were talking about that, and that's something that we really have to dig ourselves out from under. Finishing yeah. last as far as people leaving the state. That's well, nothing it's hard because see. those reforms, uh, you know, those are very difficult and they're painful. And once you get yourself in a bad budget situation, even as a family, it takes a lot to take yourself out of that bad budget situation. And it's painful. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about the transportation all the time. I feel like this is a town that is, we want to be a transit hub. So, first of all, we need to fix the transit. But I'm really concerned about the lawsuit. I'm, I feel like I'm one of the only people really talking about, you and me, are talking about the lawsuit and changing our school district. I think that's a really important I don't think there's issue. an awareness of that. Well, all you have to do is, all you have to do is Google Gary Stein, who's a former Supreme Court justice, in the lawsuit that was filed against the state of New Jersey, and the question is going to be whether or not the Supreme Court opens up these borders. Now, we can stop that as legislators, and that's why I'm talking about it, making sure people are aware that Summit controls Summit and the story. Yeah, we appreciate you working hard for us. Yeah, thanks so, for all the work you've done. We appreciate it. Yeah. It's not nice, easy. Nice to be here. And we're doing a lot of bipartisanship with respect to transit, because let me tell you, those trains aren't running, we yeah. lose more people. Taxes being high, bad, trains not running, real bad. No, it is. All I right, take those you. trains and it's Good. not been the best. Yeah. We're going to work on that. Great. Well, thank you so you. much for joining us. I know you're running out of here. Absolutely. Good to see you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Okay. All right. So our next interview is our city clerk, yes. Rosemary Lickatees. Wow, that's great. Yes. And... Um, I would just take a look, right? Oh, I, you know what? Actually, we have a surprise guest. Oh, we, we have do. Senator Kane. Oh, great. Let's, have, let's <laughs> bring him in. We would like to have him. Come on over. This is like the red carpet this is here, our, right? This, this is, this is like ahead. the red carpet. Hey. So good to see you. Happy good New Year. See. Thank you, you too. You. Happy New Year. Yeah. How are you? Good to good see, see you. you again. Good to see you as well. So, so we were just saying to, to Assemblyman Bramnick, mm -hmm. what are you guys working on? I know you've been traveling across the state. What do you hear that's different in 2009? I know we're only a few days in, but what's going on across the state that people are concerned about? Affordability. Too many of their families and friends are being forced to move out of the state. And, you know, we've, we're a state that benefits from generations of people living here, people living a mile away from their parents and their grandparents. And right now that's not happening. So people are seeing the increase in spending in Trenton, the increase in taxes. You had a you know, $1.7 billion increase in spending last year, an 8%, uh, you know, $1.7 billion in, spend, uh, in spending increase, 8% spending total increase last year. So the tax is going up. People see that's un you know, wrong. And they're also seeing that the state is uncommutable. So when you're looking at whether it's driving or on New Jersey Transit, and they're seeing all these things are going on that's hurting their, their, their daily commutes, and that unpredictably that commute hurts everything from time at home with the family, ability to get their job done, and also the home value. 
And all those things are really bubbling right now, and people are really concerned right now. Yeah, oh, wow. So what would you do? What was the first thing that you would look for to, to continue to do in 2019 to help that situation? Well, well, well on, the, on the commuting side, yes. I've been working for years on making sure New Jersey Transit is far more transparent and accountable to people in New Jersey. Right. They've got alternatives. If, if a, a link is, is shut down, you should, and so you've got to be much more aggressive on that front. You've got to have a great deal more oversight. I've been fighting for that for years. We started that process. They still have a personnel problem. When one engineer retires, or stays at home from work, all of a sudden it shuts down the entire line. So you've got one person creating a systemic problem. So we're, we've still got a lot more work to do. We have started to do some, some good things already in, from a management oversight transparency side, but the, administra- the implementation of that is a day-to-day issue, and this administration needs to work harder and needs to do more on, on the state level, number one. So we've got done some more to do. On the affordability issue, I, for years, have tried to say, let's constrain spending in Trenton. If you have like a 2% cap on state increase in spending, just like you do on the, on, the, on the municipal level, then you wouldn't have these unexpected or unpredictable 1%, 8% increases in spending in one year and 2% increase in the next. And what you were able to do by constraining that, 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 those costs, you could have on pensions, on health benefits, and all those things, you could have real platinum to gold reform, which would save over a billion dollars a year, meaning you wouldn't need tax or spending increases on the state level, that predictability over time right. would mean there'd be more jobs staying in the state of New Jersey, more families being able to afford to live in the state of New Jersey, more people being able to stay closer to where they want to be. Right. Yeah, and that's what families want. Yeah. So, but okay. listen, we know that you Great. have a busy night tonight, so thank you so much for coming thank by. You. How Thanks long for all you your good work. Good yeah, see you. hopefully we'll see you out there. That we will. The, all right. Be safe now. Thank you so Bye, much. Bye, Senator Kane. Okay. Great. Now. So we've got the big wigs out of the way. Yes, we do. Now we got the bigger wigs coming. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Actually, Rosemary has made this night oh. an incredible evening. Oh, Where? Wonderful. There she is. Oh, it's so good. Evening. Evening. So good to nice see to you. Nice to see you. Happy New Year. Thank you. And um, this is a big night for you. Yes. Is this your fourth one that you're doing it on is your my fourth. since yes. you have become the city clerk? Yes. What does it take to make this night go off and well, really be smooth? Well, it takes a lot of planning ahead, and the experience doesn't hurt. Uh, But we have a special evening set uh, for this evening. We do a lot of different events for this special evening. We uh, will elect a council president. Mm -hmm. We will be saying goodbye to Councilwoman Mary Ogden. It makes me very sad, but happy for her. She might have some free time on her hands. (laughs) Um, And then we'll be welcoming our newest uh, member of council, Greg Bartan, from Ward 2. Um, also for this evening, uh, we plan for the, the, the uh, mayor's State of the City address, mm-hmm. where she's going to report on the current status of the city, and then she'll convey her vision of the future for our city. Mm-hmm. And, and then we round out the evening by um, thanking our retiring volunteers. And that takes a lot of planning ahead. Yeah. Got to make sure decisions have to be made by the council, by the mayor, and then, you know, we have to get in touch with people and say thank you and please come and let us recognize you and convey our appreciation for everything you've done to make the city the best place we can live in. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to ask you one question because I know you have a lot to do tonight. But you've been in Summit for a long time and you've been working for City Hall for some time now. Yes. What are you most excited about as we are moving forward, the changes that are happening? Which, what are you most excited about? There's a lot of changes. Personally, I, I'm can't wait to see the inside of the community center. Ah. It's beautiful from the outside. I did have a tour of it during the construction, so I'm waiting for it to be finally completed so we can all enjoy it. Um, I'm interested to see where the uh, Broad Street West development takes us and uh, what we can do with that piece of that parcel of land. I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll be good for the city and maybe it'll give uh, the fire department a new home. So I know you're working hard. a lot of things to look forward to. So yeah. thank you for everything you do. I don't want to keep you because I know you have a lot of guests. Yes, yes. Um, but I have to go out and greet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for very coming over to see me. All okay. right. Have a great night. Thank you. All right. Big night for us. As I was mentioning earlier, we've had uh, this afternoon the 116th Congress in, but now we have a new summit group coming in as well. That's right. Led by the mayor. And just some thoughts for how you saw 2018 transition into 2019 and what are some of the priorities, what are some of the accomplishments that you feel you've made, which there are more than a few, and what do you see as priorities for 2019? Well, well, first of all, um, I 
don't think um, you can underestimate how the, that the uniquely cooperative relationship council members and I have with each other Hi. and with city staff. <laughs> and Hi, everybody truly to see you. Good to see you. what's best for the residents. So it's a very, very collegial atmosphere. Um, priorities for next year, and has partly have been this past year, safety. Safety for our pedestrians, for people that work in downtown, who come here to, to go to school, and also who live here. So pedestrians, people um, on bicycles, and vehicles. So we've done several things this past year. We're looking to focus on more even next year. Um, another thing is to increase and promote um, robust growth in the town, and I'll be announcing tonight what our vacancy rate is downtown. I'm very interested in it's, hearing that. I remember you said 4% last year, and there are rumors that it's, it's a little bit lower. A lot lower. Yeah. So we're right. very, very pleased about that. Um, and and there's, th there's some interesting stores coming through, and part of that is because council, uh, with the planning board, loosened up some of the ground floor restrictions as to who could come in as retailers. So one of our retailers is a microbrewery yeah. coming so, in. So we're looking forward to your uh, state of the city, but one question. Yep. We, one of the things and one of the priorities you had last year was also to make Summit or continue and grow Summit as a hub for transportation. Yes. So what do we do when the trains don't run? Right. Well, you know what? The best thing we can do is, is make ourselves known to the governor's office and to New Jersey Transit. I have a great relationship one-on-one -on -one with both contacts in that office. But recently, the governor signed a bill, in fact, he signed it here in Summit, that which really changes for the first time how New Jersey Transit is governed. So now for the first time, commuters will have a seat on the board. I think there's two or three of them. Meetings will be much more frequent and open to the public and will be held at night sometimes when, when commuters can attend. And there's a lot that they are allowing to hire more engineers. They're now going to be able to hire them for people who live out of state rather than only having to hire in New Jersey. What we were doing was hiring New Jersey yeah, residents right. to be engineers and then not paying them a whole lot of money we train them and boom they'd move to New York where they could work for a lot more money for Metro North well we're looking forward so those things are changing we're, and that's going to help we're looking forward to your uh, state of the city thank you and thank you very much for your service uh, you've uh, become a very popular mayor and I want to thank you for your time well, and service thank here. you and again another one of the wonderful volunteers that you're putting this time in so thank you George okay. and happy new year thank you mayor thank you. David Naidu, and congratulations are in order because you just won your re-election. Thank you very much. Yeah, are you excited? I guess I am, yes. <laughs> I know. After three years, I guess it's a little tempered by excitement, but I am still excited. Yeah. Well, and there's another com possible congratulati uh, graduate Congratulations in order, I can't get that out, um, because rumor has it you might be re-elected as council president. That's the rumor, but of course my colleagues could blindside me and we could end up with somebody different, so we'll see. Oh, I doubt that. Um, you know what, just for a little bit, for our viewers out there, I just want to do a brief update on um, what does a council president do sure. versus um, a regular sitting member of council? So the only difference that a council president has oh, wow, wow. really is uh, the council president <laughs> has the control over the city's agenda. Mm -hmm. Now, any council member could bring up an issue for consideration, but typically the way council works is in advance of any city council meeting, the city council president gets to review what is on the agenda and so what is being considered. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's, I mean, as in that sense, one has a fair amount of say of what is going to happen at the next council meeting. Yeah. What are you most proud of that you accomplished last year? Because you were the, the council president last year. Right. Um, so what did you accomplish that you were most excited about? Well, actually, I, it was two initiatives that I think were were not necessarily specifically uh, city-related, but yet council-related. One was the fact that we started doing council on the road, and we went out there to the community, and we heard from residents. And as a result of having those discussions, we were able to pinpoint issues that specific residents in specific neighborhoods had and, and try to resolve it for them. Uh, one of the things that I find always uh, here is the fact that not, not many people come to council meetings, but there are a lot of issues. And when I go door to door, as I did this past year, uh, you, there are plenty of people who have plenty of issues in town, and those need, issues need to be addressed. The other thing we did was to have the city's agenda in plain English before every single council meeting. So this way people understood what it is before it was decided whether they wanted to be involved and participate in. And I, I think having that open transparency that we tried to do last year in council, and which, which I expect we will continue in this year's council, uh, helps people to be engaged in the process. 
I think that's exciting because you're right. I think people are busy and they want to know that the people that they elect are doing a really hard job, a, a good job for them. So I'm already getting the wrap up already. Can oh you believe God. this? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's so rude. I want to have two more minutes <laughs> with you. But listen, go enjoy your family. And we're really excited to Thank see you, you potentially much. get sworn in tonight. Thanks Congratulations on your reelection. Thank you and happy new year. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, David. Bye. So I am here now with Greg Vartan. Hi. How are you? Happy New Year. Excellent. Thank you. Good to Same see to you. you. A millennial who's been elected. You are one of maybe seven or eight. You were talking about this right before the interview. There's not that many young people who have been elected. And you have, you ran two years ago. I did. And tell me about the transition that you saw in yourself over the last two years becoming elected now as War II Council. Sure. Absolutely. Um, so I was, I was sitting down with Steve Bowman, uh, you know, who beat me in 2016 by nine votes. And I was joking with him that, you know, it was, eight. it was eight plus a write-in, <laughs> okay. uh, you know. But uh, I, was, I was joking with him, uh, you know, that maybe it was better for Summit that he won. Uh, you know, and I think uh, the reason is because in the last two years uh, on the planning board, I've had the opportunity uh, to really learn about the way that our government and Summit works. Um, and the things that are going to be important uh, for the future of Summit, uh, the challenges and opportunities that we're going to face. Um, and I think that those two years have been an incredible time of growth, uh, both professionally and in my, in my service to the city of Summit. So I'm, I'm really happy that over that amount of time I was able to be in, as involved as I was. Greg, tell me one thing. If you want to change one thing in 2019 that you want to focus on, that you can even leave a legacy about as a young person, what would that be? It would be making Summit more affordable. For, for all age groups, but especially my age group. Would the know. millennials be looking yes, at you absolutely. as a leader? Absolutely. And as, as you were saying before, there were actually seven of us, right. uh, young people under 30 uh, that were elected in Union County. Um, right. So, you know, I think that's a really cool testament to how, you know, our generation is, is choosing to get involved and make their voice heard. Well, we're looking forward to watching you. Congratulations. Thank I'm you very, very happy much. for Thank you. you. And Thank you. Uh, good luck. Have a good night. Thank you. I'm with Councilwoman Mary Ogden, our outgoing Councilwoman. How are you feeling tonight? Uh, it's a very bittersweet night. Um, I have loved my three years on council. I uh, love this council. They're a wonderful group to work with. Uh, the city's in fantastic hands. I mean, they're dedicated members of the community that have, they give their all. And we, you know, we just worked really, really well together. So this is truly a bit... I uh, I'm sad to sad to say goodbye. I know, we're sad to see you go. You're one of four women on the dais right now. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. So we are sad to see you go. And you've lived in Summit over 30 years. Yes, it's going to be 30 years this year. Oh yep. And you've yeah. volunteered in many different ways. <laughs> so council is kind of your last hurrah, I think, right? Yes, I'm actually though going on the planning board, so it's not my last oh. last hurrah. So I, I will be serving on the planning board, uh, uh, mayor's appointment. So I'm looking forward to doing that. But yes, I've I've volunteered for many years, and uh, but this was like the cherry on the top. This was wonderful. This is amazing. This uh, this city is a city that you know you feel proud to work for, and you want to give everything you've got to make sure that the city is safe, that the city is uh, well run, well managed, and those things are happening. And listening to the listening to the uh, citizens of Summit and uh, the downtown, and you know everybody's needs are very very important, and being able to hear what everybody's needs are. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're sad to see you go. Um, and I know that now I'm happy to know that you're on the planning board. But just really quick, because I know we don't have much time. Mm -hmm. I just was curious, what do you see over the next year that you're excited about, that you worked on this past year, um, that you're excited to see come to fruition? Well, I think there, there are a couple things. And, and it's a very exciting time for this city, because with the redevelopment, everybody's probably talking about that. But that is a very exci exciting time. Um, city needs rateables. This is an excellent opportunity to make that happen and do it mindfully. Um, and I think that a lot of people are coming forward with very good ideas. I think because there was so much interest from development um, that that shows that city is a, uh, the summit is the city that people want to be in. And I think it's a an exciting time, a really exciting time. And so I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the council will do with that. Uh, I have a little piece of that to do with on the planning board, so that's exciting. Um, but I, I, I think good things are ahead for summit. I really do. I think. Uh, it's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. And we're going to miss you, but I'm uh, glad that you're on the planning board. Well, thank you. All and right. I'm going to miss, miss being here. Yes. Have a great night. <laughs> thank you. Bye, Mary. So I am here with Beth Little, 
council person at large for the city of Summit. It's been one year now. Yes, it has. How wonderful that's been. It has been a good T year. Tell me what you learned in 2018 and what you expect to do with that in 2019. Well, I, you know, I came in as the chair of the finance committee, which was a big task to come in as a new council member, but it really was the perfect job to have as um, to learn about the city um, because in doing the budgets and getting um, learning what we were going to do with those last year, I got to meet with all of the department heads and really um, hear from them about what their goals were for the year, um, how their departments work, and how we can support them to make them work even better for the people of Summit. So that was the that was my biggest learning um, moment last year and it was really great we were able to come in with a zero percent um, municipal budget which last amazing, year by the way. which was um, one of our goals um, yeah. and that's one of the platforms I ran on was fiscal responsibility and I'm really proud that we were able to do that with the support of the department heads and uh, Mike Rogers the city administrator so uh, one more question as yep. we're trying to wrap up here um, there's been a little bit of a divide in our country and uh, for numerous reasons. Tell me what you would do as a leader here in Summit to continue to unite people, because I think you've done a good job doing that up to this point. What is it that you need to do? Well, you know, I'm the council member at large, which means I represent every single person in the city of Summit, and I take that really seriously. So when I was campaigning and as I govern, I really reach out to all kinds of different aspects of the community. I listen, I talk, I go to neighborhoods where I don't live, where my children don't go to school, and I really try to listen and, and bring all those different perspectives to the issues that we face here in Summit. And I think that that's really what's important is listening and respecting everyone, no matter what their viewpoints are and no matter, you know, if their lives are very different from yours. So that's really what I've tried to bring to my job as council. And I think that's the best way we can all come and together. A, and that's a great answer. Councilperson Little, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Happy thank New you. Year. You too. Thanks. Thank you so much. How are you feeling tonight? Well, you know, it's like opening day. You know, we're, 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 we have a lot of things on our agenda and we have a lot of goals and uh, the slate is clear. And so it's time to, uh, to get down to work, if you say. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's talk about goals. You said you have a lot on the agenda this year. What are you going to be working on? So I am now, I, I, I've been on works and safety for the last couple of years. And now I'm getting to return to finance and then I'm chairing the legal and personnel group. Okay. And so legal is going to have some challenges because we have the, the uh, Broad Street development and all those other type of things that are going on downtown that we need to uh, to make sure all of our legal ease is, is done properly and we have some other uh, affordable housing things that we need to address. So we, we, we have a, a full plate mm -hmm. and uh, you know all good things and, and all, also I guess we'll have to address uh, if and when the uh, marijuana legalization comes about and how we will address that. So those are a couple things that we are, are looking forward to, to addressing this year I'd say. Excellent. I think you have a full plate. Yeah, it is. It is. It's. It's. But it's fun, yeah. you know. So we we have a lot to do, and hopefully, I can follow up on some projects that started and works, and and bring some closure to those as well. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. Go enjoy the rest of the evening. What's yeah. left of it? Because we only have a few more minutes. You bet. All Happy right. New Year, everybody. Yeah. Good luck tonight. I'm here with Matt Gould. How Hello, are you, sir? Good to see you. Council Person Ward Two. Ward One. I wrote you a letter. The first And word. you wrote it back right away. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate that. It was an email. Yes. So thank you so much. Yes. Uh, so tell me, one year into it, right? what are the things that you've learned in 2018 and what do you expect to happen to you, for you to have an impact in 2019? Thank you for the question. Well, I've learned a tremendous amount in uh, 2018 from the incumbent uh, com council members as well as from all of the really good city staff we have. So I was uh, the chair of the safety committee and I was on the law committee. And uh, as the uh, safety committee chair, I got to really understand how um, we keep our citizens safe, all the work that the fire department does, the police department. And we were able to achieve a lot, especially uh, we, we got the new fire department started, the process for that, um, which is something we need in this town. And we, got, uh, we made a lot of uh, improvements for traffic safety through engineering and through enforcement. You know, that was, that, and I've, I've noticed many of those that were cited by that. By the way, one more question, as yes. we're always running out of time here, it seems. Uh, two things. What would you do right now to continue to improve our schools? Because they are improving all the time, and there's no doubt about it. And the, ask, the, the issue of affordability, what are those two? Maybe just one or two thoughts on schools and affordability. Okay, well, my first thought about schools, it's no secret that I'm a big uh, proponent of full-day kindergarten, that uh, I know that about 90% of school uh, districts in New Jersey already have full-day kindergarten, and I know that our big brother over to the east already has universal pre-K. Um, 
I know that people are concerned about the budget. I know that, but I believe that it's uh, our duty to educate all of our citizens, and you know, to provide that service for all of our young young people. And I also think it's a uh, it's a it keeps our property values high. You know, it's a safe it's a safety for our property values. If we don't have full day kindergarten and all the towns around us do, I think that's going to have a negative impact on us. Despite all the arguments, if nothing else. It's an insurance policy on real estate. Anyway. That, that's what I believe. Yeah. Yes, insurance policy on real estate. That's a thank good you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Here I am with Mike McTiernan, Councilman Mike McTiernan from Ward One. How are you doing tonight? I am excellent. Thanks for uh, speaking with me this evening. Yeah. So this is your sixth year that we're going into this. So you've done this before. <laughs> I have done this for many years. That is absolutely true. What committee are you going to be on this year? Uh, so I am chairing a new committee. It's the Administrative and Communication Committee. So we restructured the committees uh, last year. That was one of the things that I did on the Law Committee. Um, and this is going to be dealing with the uh, Administrative Office, the Clerk's Office, as well as our Communication Office to think uh, because there's a lot that goes through that, and it really f was falling through the cracks. So that was one of the things that we did to reorganize it. So it should be exciting. We, you know, we'll figure out what we need to do with it, but um, we think there's a lot to maybe streamline functions, uh, uh, look at how the different groups interact together, org charts, uh, that kind of thing, as well as communication policy, how we're going to approach that, what's the best way to get the message out to people using social media, traditional uh, media, that kind of thing. Oh, well, you know, I have to say it's already working if that's what you've been doing, because I feel like I know what's going on all the time, the social media, the website, is that all under that umbrella? Uh, it will be, absolutely. So the city's obviously done a lot, and uh, a couple of years ago we redid the website, um, but Amy Cairns has been great at uh, really communicating, but we'll try and put a little more form around it, I guess, uh, uh, and, and also contingency things about if something goes wrong, how are we going to respond, uh, have a real communication policy, which we really haven't gotten our hands around in the past. Right. All right, so are you going to go get, grab something to eat before the meeting starts because it's ticking down? <laughs> I think I will, absolutely. Right. Yeah. It was so good to see you tonight. Good luck. Okay, thank All you right. very much. Thanks, Mike. Last but not least, Marjorie Fox. Welcome. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. you Council too. person, Ward 2. Yes. Really appreciate the work you've done. Okay, so tell me about the committee you're going to be on in, the, in this coming year and what you're going to be doing with that and what impact you want to have. Okay, well, it's a new committee. It's called Capital Projects and Department of Community Services. It's actually a combination of two old committees, which were um, Buildings and Grounds and Public Works, and this covers basically all of the capital projects in the, um, in the city, as well as um, all of the operations of the Department of Community Services. So permitting, land use, um, and all of the development will all, will all fall under that That's committee. That's really critical to the, the state of summit. It will. is, and we're going to be looking at a lot of really important issues. Um, probably the largest is the Broad Street redevelopment, where we are underway now. We're going to be developing a redevelopment plan that will be a draft that will go out to the public. In That'll be watched very carefully by everybody. Absolutely. It's a big, big job. One more question that because mm -hmm. we're being asked to okay. wrap up okay. is your feeling on the continuing improvement of schools, which is happening oh. in, in, in some of it, but just your thoughts on it. Well, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be serving on the Board of School Estimate this year, and I really... Um, I want to make sure that we give all students in Summit an opportunity to succeed and that we make it so um, all of the educational opportunities are accessible regardless of ability to pay. Well put. Thank you very much. Thank Congratulations. You. Marjorie Thanks. Fox, Ward 2. So, Come on over. We did okay. Come join me. I, I feel like that was lightning round. It <laughs> with was. All, with all the people we, that we you, spoke with. It, was, that a, was that two minutes each person? I think it, we went a little over. But it's good it, to know. Yeah, but good this was know. a really exciting no, it's, night. It's a wonderful night. We have great, great council people. Mm -hmm. I'm very pleased with it. I'm looking forward to hearing Mayor Radist and the uh, state of the city. So am I. Yeah. And, you know, I think this is a great opportunity to, to thank all the volunteers and City Hall, all of them who work really hard, not only tonight, but out throughout the year to make this a vibrant town, keep it safe, and just a wonderful place to live. You know, and I think that's so important to say that because I don't think... Uh, many residents realize the kind of work that goes into being right. done in this building. You're right. A huge amount of, you know, it's 22,000 people in Summit. That's incredible, yeah. right? All you right. Know, got school districts and everything else, so it's, yeah. it's good. Thank it you. It's good. All right, so I guess we should say goodbye. 
Well, yes. That's it. Goodbye for now. All right. So I'm Lisa Allen with HTTV. I'm George Lukacs. And we want to thank you for watching tonight. If you want to see more programming like this, please go to hometowntv.org. And if you want to volunteer or you want to know more about the City of Summit, go to cityofsummit.org. Have a great night. Enjoy the show.